My father never knew his biological father. My father and I did not get along. My, I have two brothers. None of us liked my father. We thought he was too harsh, thought he spanked us too hard, thought he whipped us too hard. He had a belt, and he would take the belt out and beat the crap out of us. Your and, dad knew my dad. <laughs> and I did not understand why he seemed to be so triggered all the time. And even worse, he would get mad at something, and then you do that same something, and he wouldn't get mad at us. You couldn't figure out what to do. So we disliked him intensely. Um, my father, at the age, I'm now 10 years old, started a small cafe. So I had to work for the SOB. <laughs> so I'm working, when I say cafe, I should say diner, because you could, it's just a little box. The grill's right there. El, was People it Elder around, Snacks? El, Elder Snack Bar. Yeah. Taste, yeah. Uh, taste the difference. Elder Snack Bar, taste the difference. I don't know who came up with that slogan. 15 seats, and so you could hear and see everything. And my dad would yell at me. Now I'm 15 years old, and it's getting a little embarrassed to have him yell at me like that. Now I was afraid of my father, so I told myself the next time he yelled at me, I'm going to walk out. He yelled at me, and I was too afraid to walk out. He yelled at me again, I didn't walk out. He yelled at me again, and this time I walked out. First time anybody in my family ever defied my father. My father came home that night. By the way, the waitress had called in sick, so I left my dad during rush hour with a restaurant full of people. Not too surprisingly, he was not amused. He came home. I'm laying on my bed. He said, why did you leave? For the first time in my life, I spoke back to my father. And I said, Dad, I'm sick and tired of the way you speak to me, and I'm not putting up with it anymore. My dad paid me $10 a day plus tips. He bought the $10 he owed me for that day. He threw it at me, walked out of my bedroom, and Larry and Troy, we did not have a conversation for 10 years. Wow. Now, we had a little house. It wasn't like I could be in my part of the house. and He's his part of the house. I knew it was ours, so I just made sure he and I were not in the same room. We did not have a conversation wow. for 10 years. And when I say conversation, I mean we did not say, is it going to rain? How about those Dodgers? How about the Rams? I didn't talk to the man for 10 years. So I graduate from high school. I go to college in New England. I go to law school in the Midwest. I'm coming home to visit my mom, but I just make sure my dad and I were not in the same room. Yeah. We did not have a conversation for 10 years. Yeah. Now, I graduated from law school. I passed the Ohio bar. I passed the California bar, but I'm living in Cleveland, and I couldn't sleep. And I knew it had to do with my dad. I figured we'd never be friends, but I figured I should say something to the man so I could at least sleep. I'm 25 years old. I'm making the equivalent of around 150 k I should be living large. I can't sleep. So I told my secretary to call, I call my clients, cancel my meetings. I'm going to go to L.A. I'll be back in three days. I went to L.A. I didn't tell my mother and father I was coming because I didn't want my dad to prepare. I'm in LAX. I took a cab from LAX to the restaurant. I knew he closed at 2.30. I got in there at 1.30. I had a big bag of luggage. My dad was shocked to see me. I said, Dad, I want to talk to you. He said, should I put your bags in the back? I said, no, Dad, I'm only going to be here for five or ten minutes. I want to tell you something. He said, okay, wait until we close. So I sat on the stool like this, and I said, okay, now, Larry. I had an hour to calm down. Don't tee off on the man. Don't tell him everything he's ever done, every whipping, everything he's ever said that will finish. You don't do that. Just do the cliff notes. Five minutes. He'll call you an ungrateful son. You'll call him a, a cruel, nasty father. And maybe when you get back to Cleveland, you'll be able to sleep. So my dad sat down about as close as you are right now. And I teed off on him. And you know how I can go. <laughs> I talked for 20 minutes nonstop. I told him about the time he spanked me in front of my best friend, Carl. The time he spanked me when my cousin Elaine was visiting. The time he did this. Everything I could think of, I told him. And after 20 minutes, I was out of ammo. I was done. Every now and then, my dad, while I was talking, would replenish his coffee. But he just took it. He stirred the coffee. He just took it. Didn't say a word. Now I'm out of ammo. My dad said, is that it? <laughs> that it? <laughs> you didn't speak to me for 10 years because of that? And I said, yeah. And he said, let me tell you about my father. Now, I need to pause here. I knew my dad was an only child because we never got any Christmas presents from anybody. And I met his mom once, so I assumed his father was somewhere, but I didn't know where or who. I didn't care. I never sat down and said, Dad, tell me about your life. I didn't like the man. What did I care? Yeah. So I'm hearing this for the first time at 25 years old. He said, Larry, you know your last name, Elder? I said, yes. He said, that's not my biological father's name. I said, what? Who's your biological father? I don't know. I never met him. You never met your father? 
No. Who's Elder? Elder was a man in my life the longest, maybe three or four years. He was an alcoholic who physically abused my mother. And when I tried to stop the abuse, he'd beat the crap out of me. Every now and then he'd work. He'd give her the money. And then come Wednesday, he'd want the money to drink. She wouldn't give it to him. He'd beat the crap out of her. He said, my mom was illiterate, had a series of boyfriends, each one more irresponsible than the other. And then my father was cried. Now, Larry, my father was so tough, I didn't think he was capable of crying. Wow. So here I am sitting here watching my father cry, and I didn't know what to say. Yeah. And he said, I came home at the age of 13. This is Athens, Georgia. And I started quarreling with my mom's then boyfriend. He didn't even remember his name. Mom sided with the boyfriend and threw my father out of the house, never to return. Now, for the next eight hours, my dad and I sat on these two stools, getting up only occasionally to, to relieve ourselves. We talked for eight hours, and he walked me through his life. Left home at 13, Jim Crow South, Athens, Georgia, at the beginning of the Great Depression. He cleaned up trash. He, he cleaned up barns. He uh, was a shoeshine boy, hotel valet. Ultimately, became a Pullman porter for the trains. They were the largest private employer of blacks in those days. Mm. So this little black boy who had never been out of Georgia goes all over the country to this place called California, a city called Los Angeles. And my dad said you could walk through the front door of a restaurant and get served? Wow. Maybe someday I'll relocate to Los Angeles. Pearl Harbor, my dad joined the Marines. Do we have any Marines in the house? I asked him why, and my dad gave two reasons. Anybody who's a Marine knows what I'm going to say. Two reasons. One, they, they, know where, they go where the action is. And number two, I love the uniforms. So my dad was stationed on Guam uh, in charge of cooking for the colored soldiers. My dad can look at a cake and tell you what's in it. He's that good. He was a staff sergeant, which meant he was a marksman and a leader of men. War is over. He goes to Chattanooga, Tennessee, where he met and married my mom to get him a job as a cook, short order cook. He goes to three or four restaurants, and he's told, we don't hire niggers. My dad, this is after the war. After the war. My dad said, I cook for them. We don't care. We don't hire niggers. Went to the unemployment office. Lady said, you went through the wrong door. My dad goes out and sees colored only, goes to that door to the very same lady who sent him out. She was just letting him know what the rules were. He came home to my mom, and he said, this is BS. I'm going to L.A., where I was before the war. I'll get me a job as a cook, and I'll send for you. My dad goes out to L.A. by himself. Wow. He walks around for a day and a half. And he's told, time and time again, you don't have any references. My dad said, I need references to make ham and eggs. He even offered to work for free for two weeks for a written reference. They wouldn't do that. Unemployment office, this time just one door. Lady says, I have nothing. My dad said, what time do you open? She says, nine. What time do you close? She said, five. My dad said, I'll be in that chair until you find something. Sat there for a whole day the next day. Came back the next day. She called him up around lunchtime. I have something, I don't know whether you're going to want it. My dad said, of course I'm going to want it. I'm starting a family, what is it? And she said, it's a job cleaning toilets. My dad did that for 10 years, the Bisco brand bread, took a second full-time job cleaning toilets at another bread company called Barbara Ann Bread, cooked for a family on the weekend to make additional money because he wanted my mom to be a stay-at-home mom and went to night school three or four nights a week to get his GED. Wow. The man never slept, which is why he was so grouchy all the time. Yeah. If I don't get five hours, you don't want to be near me. This guy would get 45 <laughs> minutes, an hour here, 40 minutes here, an hour here, 40 minutes here, not day after day, not week after week, not month after month, but year after year. You do that, you walk into a house with three rambunctious boys as we were, what kind of mood are you going Come to on. be in? Come on. And as my dad is telling me this, the man is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And my dad said, you know, and then, you know, when I was married before, I said, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you were married before mom? He said, yes. I thought they were going to say six months, nine months. I said, how long? He said, seven years. Wait, my mom and my dad were married 56 years. You were married to somebody else for seven years? Yes. What happened? She cheated on me. She couldn't have kids. And then the other time I was married, well, <laughs> <laughs> got married at 18. The woman, teenager, her parents found out my dad was an eighth grade dropout, marched her down to the courthouse, annulled the marriage. So dad, first marriage is annulled. Second marriage, woman cheats on you. Why in the world do you get married again? He said, Larry, because I wanted you. 
Wow. Wow. Now I'm crying. <laughs> and so after eight hours, oh my God. I'm crying, and I said, Dad, please, sir, you're tearing up? <laughs> There's no crying in baseball. <laughs> and um, you're making me cry. And I said, Dad, please forgive me. Please forgive me. And my dad said, there's nothing to forgive. You just didn't know. Just follow the advice I've always given you and your brothers. Hard work wins. Come on. You get out of life what you put into it. That's right. That's right. Larry, you cannot control the outcome, but you are 100% in control of the effort. Wow. And before you moan or groan about what someone did to you or said to you, go to the nearest mirror, look at it, and ask yourself, what could I have done to change the outcome? And finally, he said this, no matter how hard you work, how good you are, sooner or later, bad things are going to happen to you. How you deal with those bad things will tell your mother and me if we raised a man. My dad and I were the best of friends for the next 35 years. By the way, I wrote a book about this eight-hour conversation called Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. The paperback is called A Lot Like Me. It's on uh, Amazon. It's by far the most meaningful thing I've ever written. If you look at the reviews, there's over 500 reviews. People say, it changed my life. It made me reach out to my father. It made me a better father. It made me a better parent. It's by far the most important thing I've ever written. Wow. Give us the name again. Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours is a hardback, which is more expensive. The paperback is cheaper. It's called A Lot Like Me. Same book, different title.